So, for this class, I'm basically going to pick up where Ivan left off manuscript wise. Uh, so, it's the end of the spada uh, versus dagger section. Uh, and then we're going to have a look at some more improvised weapons that come a little bit later in the manuscript. So, first few things we're going to have a look at uh, start with the sword in the scabbard. Okay? So, a bit of context, which he doesn't give us in the manuscript particularly. Um, but anyone who's ever worn a scabbard knows that when you're wearing them, if you're in a crowded place, they're a massive pain in the arse. You get close to someone, and you start doing this. Get off or you know you start taking out market stalls if you're going shopping with your lady so you take it off and you carry it okay in the manuscript he gives us three different ways to carry a scabbard um, to avoid having it sticking out behind you and we're going to have a look at what he suggests you do if you're attacked while you can't carry your scabbard so the person attacking you is just going to have a dagger because he's a lowly peasant um, and the setup is very similar to fifth master dagger so I'm out in the streets, doing my own thing, and he's going to come up and grab me and start throwing me with that. <coughs> the first way he shows to hold it is propped up on your left shoulder, okay? Chris is going to come up, he's going to grab hold of me with his left hand, if you can, mind me yeah. just there. <laughs> <laughs> and he's going to start threatening with the dagger in his other hand, okay? Now obviously if that dagger's not there, great, I'm just going to start beating him with the man the sword, I'm not too fussed. As soon as that dagger comes in play, much like with fifth, I need to start worrying about that and not about that. Okay, first play that we can do is nice and simple. One hand on the hilting sword, one hand on the scabbard, and as he comes in to stab, I'm just extending that out into his bicep. Okay, now being a little bit nice to Chris, because this is a wood core, and if I smash this really hard into his bicep, it'll really hurt him. Um, I mean, I might just do it a lot of times anyway. <laughs> <laughs> but all it is, as it comes in, shoot that out. Little tip, they draw you down your sword slightly on the way through, and then you can step back, fully drawing it, and running through with your sword, okay? One trap that people tend to fall into is forgetting to start to draw the, the sword as it comes in. You end up there, and then you draw it all the way back out here before you can get in for that thrust, okay? And all I do is basically keep my right hand where it is and extend the, the hand that's got the scabbard in it out a little bit, okay? It also helps if you're holding it really nice and close to the top of your scabbard. If you're holding it up there, you can't extend very far. Both. So all it is, there, draw it out, stab, 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 step back, Okay, partner up, find someone who's got a scabbard preferably, have a few guys in The, the easiest of the three of these plays that we're going to look at. And for this to be textbook perfect, if you look at the, the um, drawing in the manuscript, his left foot forwards, it comes out and that allows you to step back with that foot to get more draw on your sword. But the reality of it, no one just walks up to you and goes, excuse me, I'm just going to grab hold of you and then I'm going to stab you. They come up to you, they grab you and start dragging your mouth, so who knows which way around your foot's going to be. If it, if it lands right foot forwards, you can spend that out great. But equally, you may end up left foot forwards, in which case you have to do a little bit more tricky footwork to get it out, but you can still do a gather step, which if anything puts more stress on this wrist and hopefully breaks that grip. So, I'd say that's the easiest of the three. The next one, the grip, is a little awkward. He specifically says that the pun punter or the point of your scabbard is planted on the floor, and in the image, both thumbs facing each other. So we've still got one hand on the top of the scabbard. The right hand is on the grip of the sword with the fingers sticking out, which is an incredibly awkward way to do it. And that's technical perfect. To make it a little bit easier, you can cock it off to one side a little bit and it starts to be more like it would be when it's hanging on your hip hop belt. Still, same setup, they've still come up to grab hold of you, they're still threatening you with the dagger. But this time, I'm not going to come down onto his arm. As it comes in, I'm going to come up there, draw that, and thrust into his sword there. All I'm looking to do is cover that, yeah? Think of this as, um, it's a dagger from Seventh Master Dagger, only it's a bit longer and you're only using one hand, yeah? All you need is to stop that stab, which is not gonna have as much power as a full range dagger stab because he's that much closer to you. And all it needs to be is enough to stop it while you get your sword out. From there, 
catch it there. You've got a nice big lever because you've got the whole length of your sword and sticking out the scabbard. Step back, again, stab in, move back out its distance and start coming. Yeah? Have a go at that. Swap partners, find someone new. Give that a go. Right, so last one of these. Um, again, slightly different grip again. This time, again, it makes point of saying that the point, point is planted on the floor, but this time both thumbs are pointing up. Both hands are, are facing in the same direction. Setup's exactly the same. They've come up, they've grabbed you. He does say in the manuscript that he, I forget exactly what he threatens you for, but he does. It's the only time he says that the person talks to you before trying to kill you. So he's clearly trying to rob you of something. Stupid because I've got a massive sword and he's got a dagger, but anyway. You rob your sword, mate. Let me have this one, it's shit. <laughs> So, point is planted on the floor, both hands are facing the same direction. Had I not broken it, this would have a nice metal shape on the end, but it's worked out quite nicely, because it's going to save Chris's face in just a minute, because for this one, I'm going to plant the tip of that squarely into his face, okay? So, dagger comes up, as soon as it does, I'm going to bring it up and over, again, drawing my sword, and planting the tip of the scabbard in his face. From there, I can use that to help me draw my sword, and then we all get to play being a witcher, and I get to reverse grip the sound of It's the only time it shows up in any of Fiori's manuscripts at least, I'm not 100% on anyone else's. Um, but again, it's a case of just stabbing, and then when you can, write your sword to the right way around. So sword to land on the floor, comes up, come all the way over, extend that out into his face, follow up with a stab, backhand slash, spinny spinny spinny, <laughs> do some magic. Have a go at that one. So, they're the three options that he gives you in the manuscript. And as far as my memory serves, it's the same in across all the manuscripts we've got. Um, just off of those three options. Obviously, there's a million and one variations and things that can, can change up how it uh, happens and how it comes off. But an important thing to note is, linking back to Luke's class from earlier, why have you let him get that close? Yeah? If I'm walking through the market street and I see someone, particularly if he's already got his dagger out and giving me the side eye, why not let him get close enough to stab me? Yeah, as soon as he's there, yeah, keep him at bay. But if it does happen, you know, he might even get too close to that, but again, he's still got a much longer weapon than he has. Even once he starts getting close to you, you should be aware of him by the time he gets there. Yeah, use it. Just because the sword's in a sheath, it's still a blunt force trauma weapon. Um, so that's just another thing to, to bear in mind when it comes to these plays. Okay? So, for the next bit of the class, we're going to move to a different section of the manuscript. Um, so if everyone disappeared, have just 30 seconds, grab a drink of water. Between your pairs, you need two spears or staffs and a dagger. There aren't quite enough spears to go around to kind of form slightly larger groups and pairs and, and swap and change between yourselves. So, jumping ahead to the manuscript, I think this comes after the Dewey manuscript section, but don't quote me on that, I can't remember. Um, and this is on to the more kind of improvised weapons slash you're not really expecting to be attacked in the situation you're in. So the first play we're going to look at, again, it doesn't give any context because Fiori never does. Um, I've always taken it as context as I'm out walking, me the Fiori is the good gentleman, I guess. Uh, is out walking, so I'm walking with a staff of some kind. I'm set upon by a ruffian who wants my money for whatever reason, and all I've got to defend myself is a staff and a dagger, because everyone will carry some sort of knife at the time. Now obviously Chris, he's going to use a spear to his best advantage and keep me at distance. He's not going to start using it like a quarter staff, he's not going to start using it like a sword. He's going to stand there and he's going to try and stab me. Great. So, all I'm going to do is plant my staff in the middle of the road. If you can, try and keep the bottom of this staff planted, it makes this defence much stronger. And as he thrusts at me, all I have to do is move my staff from side to side and reflect that spear thrust off to either side. Okay? Now don't get me wrong, if he's thrusting really fast and really hard, a couple of them might get through. But, you're going into this, expect to get stabbed. No one goes into a, a fight with sharp weapons and doesn't get hit in some way, except Fiori. <laughs> <laughs> So, the actual play is Chris going to thrust in. When I can, I'm going to deflect his spear off to my left hand side, opening a nice big space here, and we step through with my dagger and plant it in his face. Okay? Now, because the spear is quite long, that does have to be quite a long step. Okay? You can lunge it, you can 
jump here. Taking two steps doesn't work particularly well because it's a little bit slower. But well, as soon as that comes through and I put it off that side, I'm in, I'm stabbing, I'm past the dangerous part of this spear. Yeah? This is just a stick. I've got one of those. And it's trapped on that side of my stick. Even as he starts to withdraw it, I can drop that, grab hold it, and I'm in. Yeah? The important thing is getting past the tip of that spear. So have a little bit of fun with this one, okay? If everyone doesn't have to be put in the off in the stab. Have a little fun with it. If you're the spearman, try and get around that a little bit. Do a few slowly to get used to the technique, and then just have a little bit of fun with it, okay? Off you go. So, that's how to deal with bad man with a spear if you have a staff and dagger. Well, it's true for your style, he, in the text of this play, he tells you how to counter it, okay? Now, being a good Furiist, if we've got the spear, we're going to be thrusting from the left-hand side. Okay, in the manuscripts, he shows it this way. Most of the spear pasta have the right hand towards the head, and also these counters don't work if you're thrusting from this side. However, this is the side that most people who give them a spear will thrust from there into the right hand, because it feels more comfortable. So, Chris is now the one being attacked, because he's got, I don't know, something that York has a lot of that I want. And I'm going to thrust in at him, he's going to deflect it, but as he comes in, I'm going to extend the butt of my spear out to catch him in the hand, okay? I said that once you pass the tip of the spear, you pass the dangerous bit, but it is still a staff, okay? So as that comes in, he's going to come in, I shorten my grip with the right hand, and as I turn that, I bring my hands together with the left, and I hit that into the side of his hand, okay? Now obviously if I'm doing this full strength, I'm going to hit through his hand and probably crack him in the side of the head. Okay, if you look at these guys with blue spears, their butts have got a nice big piece of metal on them. That will do a lot of damage if you swing that into the side of someone's head. Yeah, so be careful with this, even with the mass on, blunt force trauma is something you can't really negate that well. But, same game, I'm still trying to thrust Chris. At some point, he's going to get good in there, okay? Once you've got that contact, there's a whole plethora of options you can do from there, yeah? I can start retiring, I can start getting the point back on. Or, I can use another part of the manuscript, come in there, and get a take down. Yeah, have a little bit of fun with this, okay? If you know any of the plays from the half sword stuff, you can try and apply some of those. If you don't, just have a go at getting that counter strike in, and see what opens up, yeah? Let's say, just have a little bit of fun with it. Off you go. Right then, folks, last little bit. I know we're all starting to flag a little bit, um, but this last one's quite fun. Um, he gets throw shit at people, so, you know, great way to finish the day. So in a minute, when I've explained this, between your pairs you'll need a spear, uh, a dagger, some sort of bassoncello replica, so whether it's a, a bassoncello or just a dagger waster, and one of these, okay? The whole bag from here is not quite enough there, I've got a few more over there, okay? So this is going back to, I'm, again, just walking out somewhere and I'm being attacked by a ruffian, okay? This is where things start to get really improvised in the manuscript, because in the image, these are two caveman clubs, you know, they're real sort of caricatures of just sticks you have found on the ground, okay? So in this scenario, I haven't got my walking stick, all I've got is my dagger, which, showing myself plug if you need something to carry your dagger, let me know, just saying. Um, and I'm going to defend against that spear with just these two sticks, okay? The position you want to be starting in is quite important, so make sure, and this is, this is very important, make sure you've got a solid thing in your left hand, and the soft thing in your right hand, okay? okay? And you want to be left foot forwards, okay. left hand low, right hand high, okay? And again, Chris is just going to try and thrust in, be in with my face, particularly because we're all wearing masks. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and from there, I'm going to use this hand to deflect that off the side, at the same time, hit him in the face with that, step in and stab, okay? The trick to this is timing, okay? Ideally, that deflection and the throw with your right hand wants to come at the same time, all right? It doesn't really matter where I hit, and it doesn't matter if I hit, because all this is is a distraction to give you the time to get in. So it's there, you move back a bit with it, as soon as that push comes in, hit in, in, okay? If you can goad him into getting a little bit closer to you before he thrusts, great, you haven't got as much distance to cover. If you can't goad him in, you've just got to be a little bit quick. But, the advantage of having this stick is I cover that, I throw in that, I've still got a cover on here. Yeah, so if he tries trying to bring that back, point back online, I've, oh shit. <laughs> <laughs> I've still got the pressure of the overbind there to keep that in place while I bury that in his face. Yeah? 
And now I've got a spear, now I've got a dagger, I'm making nice and close, just keep burying it in him. Take your spear off him, stab him with that, go home, tell your mates you've got a peasant. Have a good day. Okay? Go for it. So you need a solid stick, a dagger, and a soft stick, and a spear between your pairs. Go. Come on in guys, last little bit, and then you can all get to the pub, slash have a shower, whichever comes first in your priorities. Uh, so, that's kind of the end of the uh, the bits that are in the manuscript that I'm going to cover. Uh, last little bit, just a few minutes, I'm just going to talk a little bit more about improvised weapons. I know Rupert's doing a big class on it tomorrow, so I'm not going to step on his toes too much. But, the one that I really like is things like belts. Yeah, belts, a bit of rope, um, I've seen this sort of thing done with just a beanie hat. It's harder because it's a little bit shorter. But, you can use these very similarly to how you use the daggers uh, for particularly 6th and 7th master or 8th master dagger. There are a few slight differences though. Obviously Chris is going to come in. That is exactly like 6th master, master dagger, yeah? As long as I keep some tension on that, he can push on that, keep pressing, and he's not going to go anywhere, okay? The big difference though, is this isn't stiff, yeah? So, with a dagger, it comes in, I can stop it there, I can let go so I can start manipulating his arm. Yeah, I can grab hold. Try and do that with something like a belt or a piece of rope. Comes in, I let go, shit, he's stabbed. Yeah? So you have to modify your approach a little bit. As I say, this isn't covered in the manuscript per se, but there's a lot of examples of it in other martial arts and other self-defense things. One of the easiest things to do is as it comes in, get that and you can just start wrapping it up. Yeah? I've taken his dagger out of his hand, I've wrapped his hand up, I can get both of those in one hand and just start laying into him. Yeah? Once I've got that out, can smack him, yeah? There's a big lump of metal on the end there. It's not very pleasant if that sort of thing hits you, yeah? So, that's pretty much it for me. As I say, Rupert's gonna do some more on, uh, on improvised stuff tomorrow. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for listening. <laughs>